Good morning, this is Ron from 724 Support TV. Today we're going to do a quick unboxing of the Fractal Design Core 1000 computer case. This is sort of a little brother to the Arc Mini and um, coming in at a really good price point of around $40 US. It uh, might be quite a good micro ATX case. Good sturdy box, nice packing material. Yeah, what's this? There's a traditional uh, call them, and this should be the how to put a computer together or the all the things you can buy. No, it's the user's manual for this case. So let's look at this. It's good, uh, looks nice. Panning down, you see that it's got full, a full mesh front, which is nice. Uh, the top, completely blank. And the switches are on the side. That would be facing it, the right hand side. So if you have it up against a wall or a on your desk against the wall or a monitor or something that would be problematic. So we have uh, power USB 2, audio connectors USB 2, and yes, that's a reset button, and a couple of teeny tiny little lights. So actually it looks quite nice. Comes off, a little floppy. Nice finish though. That's perfectly acceptable, yeah. There's a back panel, it's good. Um, it's little. All right, let's move on. So, let's call that, wow. Effectively no room for cable management. So cabling is gonna be interior. There are no cutouts at all. Um, these are probably standoffs. Power supply is at the top. That's good for if you're on the if your computer's sitting on the floor. Well, while we're here, we'll move to the back. Uh, power supply at the top. Cut out four PCI uh, expansion slots, which is the micro ITX micro ATX standard, um, and an 80 or 92 millimeter fan. A little extra exhaust for uh, graphics cards, not very much. And one of the real questions we have today is what, what kind of um, cooling fan can we put inside of it? Certainly, we can't put, this is 92, we can't put any of the, the Corsair H-Series 120 uh, water coolers, and probably we're not gonna be able to fit a 120 tall uh, fan of any sort. Okay, that's a little tight. Again, floppy, that's room for a 120 on the side. Uh, it is not filtered. So moving out of the front, um, before we get to the inside, it is removable by putting a surprising amount of force to pull it off. And you'll see that the edge connectors are not attached. However, that one fan most certainly is, so we'll unfeed that. And it's a standard fractal fan. So let's move to the inside. The inside is, uh, is unique slash peculiar. Um, this is, there's an accessory kit in here. Let's take that out for the moment. Uh, this is, it might have something in there. Um, this is designed to mount your hard drives behind behind the uh, this panel. So you end up with your hard drive sort of mounted here, two of them. Um, I see now that this is the traditional twist-off thing there. 
That's dead solid. Looks like at one point somebody thought about cutouts for three and a half and then they weren't included. Uh, what I do notice though is that the holes, let me zoom in on those. These holes, which are the typical large holes so, uh, so a uh, grommet can fit in, I'll try this so you can see. Um, They go in different directions, which means you have to put the grommets in and then screw the seed, screw the drive through it. And what you cannot do is mount the grommets to the drive and then put the drive in and then drop it into place. Leon Lee has that feature and perhaps it's patented, so it can't be used elsewise, but it's certainly more convenient than this, which means you move from an easy toolless and low vibration design to uh, must screw it together on the panel. The panel comes off with a couple of extraordinarily uh, well tightened thumb screws. And let's see, the last fractal case we opened had three different sorts of thumb screws. So let's see if these thumb screws are the same as the case thumb screws. And they are, thankfully. Okay, good. So that's a plus over the Arc Mini. And one more. All right, so that's, that's the design. And then it, so you mount your hard drives back here. Now, what is interesting about this design, positive, is that airflow is gonna go straight through. So you're gonna have a couple of hard drives that will pick up air and then all the air will flow through. There's not a lot of, exhaust so you're going to end up with a positive pressure scenario you have 120 here 92 back here and possibly another 120 coming in so very much a um, a positive pressure the accessory kit that comes inside does in fact contain another uh, five and a quarter bay cover although it's got a mandatory cutout for a three and a half inch device um, let's call that a fan controller as opposed to floppy. And then the traditional screws and standoffs and uh, a speaker, which is good. Concluding my review of the Fractal Core 1000 case. This has actually been a very slow review to do because I wanted to get a build done in the case to make sure it would work. As you see now, we have a build, it's done, it's working and it works good. The problem we had was that uh, sort of a Goldilocks tail. To put an i7 in there, this is a 3770K, the stock cooler was going to be too small, too weak, too loud. The uh, Cooler Master Hyper 101 fit fine, but once I added a second fan to provide enough cooling capacity, the mounts were just not up to the task of dangling for extended periods of time. So that was too small. Uh, there, because there's a 92 millimeter fan at the back, there's absolutely not enough, let's go in, there's not enough room for a 120 millimeter um, cooler. So we tried the Zalman 110 millimeter cooler, which did fit, but all of a sudden meant that you couldn't have um, a fan on the front to push air into the, into the graphics card assembly. A, uh, similarly, a Corsair H80 does fit, but means that you can't put any hard drives at all on the inside, you could put one up here. Um, so you could only be able to put, I think a couple of SSDs fundamentally. So we settled on the Zalman C CNPS 7500 CU LED, which is a 92 millimeter horizontal copper cooler. Um, not very expensive, but quite effective. And it seems just right. It fits over the memory, which is was one of the key things. It doesn't obscure. It looks a little like it does in this in this shot, but it does not obscure. Um, 
the first card slot. Um, and we were able to put in both a large hard drive for data storage and an SSD boot drive. So, in summary, it worked well. Um, some of the box labeling was a little, a little misleading. You can fit in total a pair of five and a quarter or three and a half devices here, and you can fit either one or two three and a half inch drives, or one three and a half and one two and a half, or three two and a half inch drives on this on this mount. Um, but you can't put any other combination than that in there. Um, cable management was not as difficult as I had expected it to be, so um, there's room in here to hide it and you can do some clever things to wander cables around. So it comes out with a pretty nice, nice looking, nice looking build. We'll see how it performs in, in the future and I may do an update, but for now, um, I'm going to give this a two thumbs up, but definitely you're going to have to either take your time and be willing to do some RMA activity or uh, plan carefully for what you put into this, into this box. Um, so for now, this is Ron from 724 Support TV with another video out. Please subscribe, comment, like, and uh, tell your friends. Thanks. Bye.